Hello everyone and welcome to the EVN Disrupt podcast. My name is Nishdet Zatrgyan. I'm the editor of the creative tech section here at EVN Report. My guest today was Gagan Bartanian. Gagan is a founding partner at Formula VC, an early stage VC firm in Armenia. We spoke about what the current global economic situation means for the tech industry and specifically for Armenia's startup ecosystem. We also spoke about what may be in store for the VC landscape in Armenia as the industry matures in the coming years. Thank you for listening. Gagan, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Mr. John, for inviting. Gagan, uh, there's a lot to talk to you about today. Uh, uh, VC investments and access to capital is in the news a lot uh, these days, given the current global economic situation. Uh, sure. But let's start with a little bit of your background. How did you get involved in the VC space and in the finance world? Sure. We need to look back a bit to 20. 16, 17, how it all started. So our uh, friends exited their startup and started to be involved in a startup ecosystem building in Armenia. At that time, I was working at a bank, mainly in, you know, finance roles. And I was the finance guy in, in our, you know, circle. And uh, upon developing various, uh, you know, missing points, gaps in the ecosystem, like uh, angel network, like startup incubator, we decided to have a fund, investment fund, that would be investing in mainly crowdfunding projects by providing like marketing funding. Uh, why we started that? Because we had uh, this crowdfunding marketing agency in Armenia, TCF, the crowdfunding Crowd formula. Program. And yeah, so uh, we started supporting uh, their uh, ecosystem and it became some global vehicle and it appeared this uh, first of its kind. So this was uh, how I got engaged into, uh, you know, fund building, as we call it, right. with Sprint Fund. It was back in 2018 already. And uh, so we were uh, uh, gathering a lot of fund management knowledge and how it all works and, uh, you know, how how are things uh, happening there. And parallelly, we were gathering a lot of knowledge in terms of startup investing with uh, Bana Angels. And so we decided to combine these two. And it ended up with Formula VC that we opened in uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Actually, we had plans to open it in 2020, but uh, each time we were going to open it, something was happening. Like you know, uh, okay. a week a week before we uh, we were opening it, uh, pandemic was announced globally. Uh, then we decided to open it in September. Then war happened, unfortunately. Yeah. So in December we decided, like no matter what, we are going to open this fund, and we need some, you know, some uh, light spot in this uh, gray environment yeah. after the war. So we decided to open the fund, and uh, in the end we went through all these registration procedures, and in January it was registered, January 2021. In March we started the operations. Right. Well, 2021 was a great time to start a uh, start a VC fund in, in yep. Armenia because uh, there's so much startup activity uh, that we observed last year, and we're seeing some of that this year as well. Yep. Uh, how much did you guys raise for your initial fund? Uh, this is our first fund. We raised like seven million for that. It's uh, uh, pre-seed, seed, pre-Series A, as we call it, early uh, investing fund. Yeah, early stage. And we invest mainly in like Armenian born or Armenian related, like Armenian founders or somehow yeah. uh, located or born here startups. What's your average investment size? Average ticket is around 200k. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's 7 million. How long are you guys, uh, what's your the duration you're planning to, for that? Um, it's pretty basic, it's like 10 year fund with, you know, some three, four years of active investment period and further uh, time will, will be allocated for developing and all that. And with this fund, we aim to invest in some 25, 30 startups. Can you speak a little bit about what startups you guys have been investing in over the last sure. year? Uh, so far, we already have uh, nine investments and two more coming up, hopefully this month or next. Uh, we started with Coinstats in 2021. It was yeah. our first startup. Then uh, we continued with Expert Tech, Robin Robot. Robin, yeah. Yeah, uh, the third one was uh, Hexact with mm -hmm. their three and now already four products. They are building some automation ecosystem for, you know, Data science any kind of business. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, then Zoomerang joined our family. Uh, with their cool app so for TikTok, you know, and all this short video editing. 
and uh, we have wild learner they are building a learning ecosystem for coders mm -hmm. and uh, easy demark which was you know yesterday made some noise TechCrunch, yeah <laughs> yeah at, at TechCrunch. yeah and uh, uh farther on we invested in blue qubit that's oh, a nice. quantum computing uh, uh startup they are building an interface for you know quantum computers blue qubit i there hasn't been much news about blue qubit but it's yeah. one of the early stage startups that i'm most excited about yeah, in the armenian cool. ecosystem because yeah. now we have a quantum uh yeah, the quantum yeah. computing uh, startup. The guys are really cool, too. and the yeah. team they have gathered they are, you know, I think it's yeah. going to be really big. Yeah, we hope so. And yeah, we we continued with Docus, Docus AI. They are uh, building telemedicine platform for hospitals. And uh, the last investment we have done, it was like a week ago. Uh, it's prelaunch.com. Prelaunch.com. Yeah, prelaunch.com. They are building yeah. a pr product validation, idea validation mm -hmm. platform for uh, any kind of products, yeah. starting with uh, hardware, ending with you know any kind of uh, gaming application ideas yeah. or everything. Yeah. When you guys are looking for startups to invest in, is there a niche that you guys are particularly interested in, like SaaS or deep tech? Or? Actually, we call ourselves as uh, sector agnostic. We don't invest in in gambling. We don't invest in uh, really slowly uh, scalable uh, topics like I don't know biotech yeah. or any kind of uh, you know regulated fields who are who are dependent on on uh, decision makings of some you know one or two persons to say. Uh, but we invest uh, uh, elsewhere. Uh, we love really B two B SaaS. Which is uh, we think it's it's easily scalable. Especially it happened so that in Armenia we have uh, more or less many uh, these type of startups. Yeah, and we look for some traction before investing. We look right. for some traction, be that uh, users, be that revenue, uh, be that experience of the founders. It is also we consider it as a as a traction because you know they can just start, but they have. So much experience, it's worth you know uh, at least five hundred k of revenue. To say, <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that from a VC before. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of what you see in the Armenian ecosystem, uh, do you think there are sort of niches developing in in the Armenian startup ecosystem of things that founders are working on, or is it quite broad? Um, I think it's both. Uh, uh, in terms of industries, it's quite broad. As I listed our portfolio, you could it's imagine very, like yeah, it's nine diverse, startups, yeah. no any you know uh, same industry, yeah. really diverse. But we have some uh, strengths in terms of AI, in terms of data analytics, yeah. and uh, uh, that's why all of our startups, I think, they are exploring, uh, exploiting this. And uh, all of them have any kind of AI components, mm -hmm. uh, machine learning, or yeah, this type of, uh, to say, scientific tools that they use and develop. And this is really cool because, uh, you know, you need to base uh, your your uh, project, your startup, your company into something innovative. And right. if it has some scientific background, it is really, it can really become disruptive. Right. Uh, but if and it's something, yeah, yeah like, uh, you know, yet another platform for doing uh, uh, all the, uh, you know, existing stuff just a bit differently, it can scale, but, you know, in long term, it yeah. cannot be really sustainable. That's one of the things that I think is really interesting in the evolution of just the global tech sector, even if you look at the Valley. Mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago, there was all these social startups popping up yeah, yeah. Uh, and everybody had a social startup <laughs> but these days it seems like it's much more uh, really science backed deep tech startups that are mm -hmm. much harder to compete against yep. um, and that seems like the thing that has become the competitive edge for companies because the social stuff has just become maybe too easy to do and, mm. and there's just way too much competition to bring something to market. Yeah, yeah. And we're, uh, nowadays there are so many tools mm -hmm. to, yeah. you know, uh, create some project. Yeah. So one can create uh, any kind of new project from scratch without knowing any kind of, yeah. you know, programming or coding or everything so it's it's really you know in terms of competition and scaling it's not sustainable so that's why Absolutely. the other type is winning yeah when it comes to the ecosystem in general you've been involved in the development of it um mm. uh, since it was far earlier than it is today yeah, yeah. what gaps do you see in the ecosystem what is there that really needs to be invested in in order for us to go from the 80 or so or 100 startups that we have now to a thousand mm. 
Sure. So, uh, yeah, actually, we, we call our system at its, uh, it's just past its pre-seed stage, through right. seed stage. So it's, uh, you know, still uh, has a lot to develop. And one major gap that uh, everyone knows in the ecosystem as well, it's education. Right. That needs to be invested a lot, and both in uh, education process itself and the system overall. Because uh, yeah, we need to we need to nurture the uh, upcoming generations, so that we have you know next generation of the startups. And uh, there is there are some you know uh, if we look at the landscape right today, we have some big players that came to Armenia, which is kind of a good thing. Like because Nvidia and yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, if we look back how our ecosystem was developing back in, you know, late 90s, uh, it started with, again, big companies. Synopsis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where where people were, you know, learning some problems there and the gathering all the knowledge and, uh, you know, uh, combining with their entrepreneurial mindset, they were coming out of those companies and, you know, starting their own projects. And now with all these big companies coming to Armenia, we hope that we'll, uh, again, continue this to see... What are the global challenges? Yeah. What are the you know global problems that these companies are facing yeah. from their you know internal or resources or internal teams, etc. So this will bring uh, uh, another generation of the startups. But uh, this uh, this is not uh, something scalable. Right. For becoming scalable, we need a lot of you know uh, we need to invest a lot in in education and and in development of the uh, coming generation to say of of startups. By development and education, do you just mean like more funding for computer science departments at our major universities, or is there something more fundamental than that? Um, uh, again, both. I think uh, I don't know uh, exactly how it needs to be done before yeah. because you know I'm I'm not really an expert there. But uh, if we look at at it, uh, we we be that you know academic education, be that some. Uh, uh, knowledge centers, be that some experience sharing, uh, yeah. any kind of you know, uh, any kind of activities that uh, first increase the engagement in the uh, sector. So you know, a young population uh, dreams of entering this uh, ecosystem. A second, uh, for these uh, guys to have any tools, you know, to uh, make their uh, entrance to the ecosystem really flawless and yeah. you know, uh, with no any barriers and to develop them further uh, through again be that academic be that uh, uh, training centers yeah. be that you know any kind of incubators or whatever it is but uh, this is this is the gap uh, that we see and it is uh, growing maybe every day mm -hmm. and if you don't invest there now I think in, in maybe you know five to seven years we'll have real, real problems yeah uh, I was speaking to another VC in Armenia recently, and uh, they were saying that one of the reasons why in, in Armenia specifically, um, most founders come out of companies like, let's say, Pixar or maybe mm -hmm. Service Titan or one of these larger players, um, or they have a lot of experience abroad working in tech companies or they studied outside, is um, because, or, uh, let me put this in context, um, in relation to founders just coming out of universities, like in mm -hmm. in the U.S. context, we hear a lot about people dropping out of school to then go yeah, off yeah. and start their startups, is because that experience at at the university level is just not sufficient enough to really mm -hmm. develop a founder, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'd be interesting to see programs at our universities that are really outside of the lecture halls, uh, things that encourage yep. entrepreneurship. For instance. I was a student at the University of Rochester. Mm -hmm. We had a program where uh, you could study for free a fifth year. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't pay tuition. Uh, you could take whatever, more or less whatever courses you wanted. And yeah. you you did an entrepreneurship year. So mm -hmm. you had to build a company or some sort of organization during that year. And they would help you with securing some funding. There was access to like yeah, grant yeah. programs and conditions. Very interesting. And even if even if most of those startups or companies didn't really succeed, mm -hmm. what was really important was uh, those students getting a real like taste of what entrepreneurship is at a time mm -hmm. in their life when you know you don't have too many commitments, you don't have too many obligations, and and you can really get that feel for it. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, definitely, like the uh, average age of of uh, like uh, you know a successful startup entrepreneur is not in twenties. Definitely, right? Yeah. It's it's you know above thirty thirty five even. Yeah. Uh, but uh, all all that gives experience. All that yeah. gives experience. All that gives the you know a flavor of yeah. failure. Uh, it gives all the you know hacks and tricks how you need to create something and you know build something yeah. everything, so yeah it's it's really important and we have couple uh, universities that are doing that uh, but it's not enough I think yeah. like uh, I know AUA is doing Epic right. uh, uh, Agrarian uni- Agri Tech we call it Agri Tech University though officially it's Agrarian University right. <laughs> but uh, you know uh, uh, sorry for that but we call it Agri right. Tech University <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> They have they have uh, their internal incubator for for this agriculture topic. So yeah, I mean uh, uh, some some of the uh, universities. So this academic. Uh, study wants to be involved in this type of activities yeah. as well which is cool uh, but yeah but it's not enough yeah. it's not enough in terms of in terms of the vision we have of, of Armenia becoming a you know regional or one of the global hubs in yeah. innovation so for that we need to uh, have this you know environment where uh, both Armenian and not Armenian startups will come here start here and you know yeah, develop absolutely. from here uh, but yeah for that we need to we need to focus more on on this university topic and, yeah. yeah it'd be nice to see some of the founders who have graduated from those universities mm. invest back in building those those programs and yeah, i yeah. think that would be really effective exactly. yeah. we have one example of of uh, crisp ai yeah, lab right, that yeah. they they opened it yeah I think there there uh, can be other examples as well uh, that I don't recall now. Sorry. For sure. But yeah, yeah uh, this one was the recent, so yeah. Absolutely. We are really yeah. proud of that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in, in the world. So in 08, 09, when there was the last financial crisis, yeah. um, the tech sector in some ways was sheltered from mm-hmm. all that. It didn't get yeah. hit as much as other sectors. Now we're seeing a lot of hiring freezes at yep. big tech companies. There's a lot of layoffs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, access to capital has become much harder. Um, let's yeah. talk about all of this. In the first, let's talk about maybe why this is happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell us what exactly? What were the fo- what were the factors that led to to where we are now? Yeah. So uh, uh, if we uh, look a bit back in uh, 2020 when yeah. we had uh, COVID and we thought that this is going to be you know yet another cycle of crisis after uh, 08 or 09, but it didn't happen because uh, a lot of money was pumped up uh, right. into into the world to say. Right. Uh, and it somehow, you know, uh, passed mildly and we all survived. And, uh, uh, yeah, further, uh, uh, if we look uh, already this year, then we started uh, with this, uh, you know, turbulence in, in our north, to say. And, uh, You're talking it, about the war. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it all started and it impacted the whole world with yeah. the, you know, logistic and uh, economic chains. And of course, the uh, uh, again economies of of US, which is the major driver of of venture capital and innovation, with all this interest rate thing, with all this inflation and everything. So uh, the VCs became more and more cautious to say, and uh, uh, there are a lot of you know startups who were trying to raise their late rounds, like right. you know Series C plus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as stock market crashed, with their opportunities for becoming public were delayed to say and all these expectations brought the market we call it to maybe like to 16 17 uh, where we were seeing that the investment goes mostly to the startups where uh, that have uh, like uh, really uh, business models that can sustain yeah and uh, have some you know fundamentals uh, fundamentals that are working not uh, uh, and they are mostly you know business driven to say and are getting investments to scale yeah. rather than uh, investment driven and you know if you just switch off it for a day it will be killed Right. It will be dead. Uh, that's why uh, a lot of startups who were really dependent on on these investments uh, think uh, they started all these layoffs and you know uh, uh, stopped their growth and now you know in a, in a uh, to say safe mode. Because they don't know when their next financing round is yeah, going to Yeah, come. whether it's yeah. going to be or no. And we are seeing a lot of big down rounds. The other day, yeah. uh, SoftBank, their vision fund, announced their results, which was, you know, awful. 
they reported 20 billion loss, wow. uh, like 23, I think, billion loss. And if you look at their portfolio, they had like, you know, all, all the, like most of the major players that we know, like, and but for example, uh, they had one startup, Klarna, it was like biggest uh, startup in Europe. It was like 45 billion or something valuation. in valuation, mm. but they raised their next round with, you know, 6.5 billion. Wow. Yeah. They, so, I mean, with all this happening... It's like 15% of the value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, they raised like 800 million, but still with 6.5. So, uh, uh, the thing is that with all this uh, happening, uh, VCs, of course, became more cautious. From another side, if you look at uh, what's happening with their uh, like LPs and VC money, uh, all the major VCs announced there, like, you know, the rounds are closed, you know, another VC uh, announcements, etc. Of course, this was not, you know, uh, finalized in June that they announced. It was finalized uh, er right. way earlier, like, you know, maybe in February, March, or even in December. But they just announced that. So, uh, from that perspective, money is there. Right. But the approach and and the strategies are changing. So all the VCs that were investing, you know, in let's say early stages, now they are investing in Series A, Series B with the more or less the same valuations. Because they now they can they can afford yeah, yeah. those tickets. Yeah, yeah. They can afford because yeah, I mean from a long term perspective, all this you know overinflated part yeah. was washed out to say. Right. And now uh, uh, all the startups who will you know survive this recession, they will become the next generation of of you know big cohort. Right. This giant cohort. And uh, from if we uh, project it into our own ecosystem. What will happen here? Again, this is the... Maybe mm -hmm. just before we get to our yeah, ecosystem, sure. I think for a lot of people who uh, might not be from the tech world, it might, mm -hmm. it's strange to them or they don't understand why startups need to keep raising capital yeah, every yeah. 18 to 24 months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you please explain a little bit uh, why sure. startups constantly raise investments? Yeah, yeah. For, for that, we need to look into the concept of startup itself. Right. So when you start some business uh, and you call it a startup, it's, you know, you need to uh, base it with uh, two, three factors. First is the growth. Yeah. how fast you are growing second is the scale how uh, big you can scale uh, and yeah these are the to say uh, uh, definitives of the startup so if you open let's say a shop in your neighborhood and call it a startup because you just started it yeah it's not so fair to say right. uh, but if you uh, if you <laughs> <laughs> if you invent invent some you know uh, uh, know how i don't know some new Something new innovative. way of thing, yeah, yeah. Uh, new way of doing things, and scale it worldwide, and you know, uh, uh, report the growth for a couple months, which is you know, a hockey stick to say. Uh, then you can already call yourself a startup. Right. We we always uh, tell this to our uh, you know startups we we interact with. Uh, we we love to call them like you know entrepreneurs, not startuppers, who are doing business with startup model to say, hmm. because their business allows them to you know uh, have all this uh, growth and scale. And so yeah, for for maintaining this uh, speed and scale, you need uh, external funding usually, right? Because uh, uh, even if you know you are profitable. Uh, if you reinvest all your profits, it will not be enough to to maintain the growth. Usually, yeah. that's what uh, we have seen. Maybe actually not even we. This VC industry has seen in in last you know forty fifty years. That's how it all you know uh, was created to yeah. uh, uh, invest in in new things and help them to grow. Yeah. But uh, again, as I said, you can't uh, uh, you know rely on that uh, all your way to you know becoming public company right. and all that. Actually, you can, and people were doing it, uh, but it came out not so uh, sustainable. And when you know some turbulence started, yeah. they were washed out. If you uh, maintain your growth or maintain your levels uh, even without some external funding, and use all this external VC funding or external investments for growth, then it means that uh, you you'll be more successful than your peers who are not doing that. Right. Because even if you know some you know tsunami starts, mm -hmm. you'll maintain your levels and but uh, yeah. you'll not grow. Okay, but uh, you'll survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the you know winds are down, then you can already again invest in growth. 
So um, the average sort of investment cycles for startups are categorized by pre-seed, seed, Series A, Series B, yep. C, D, E, F, etc. Mm -hmm. um, let's say all goes well, a company gets their seed round and yeah. uh, they start building out their product, grabbing the market. What's in today's market, um, mm -hmm. or actually let's say pre-economic crisis, yeah. uh, uh, what was the average life cycle for getting from – seed to series a and series mm -hmm. a to series b it's 18 to 24 months or it was even less like yeah. during uh, 2021 the average timing for becoming a unicorn was uh, four years and eight months <laughs> right so you know and because uh, startups were becoming unicorns in series from series c to series d to say sometimes even from series b to series c yeah but, you know, it was not really healthy to say. Right. So uh, at that time, the uh, gaps between the rounds were up to 12 months. Right. So, But now I think it will go back to maybe 16, 18, That's something normal like range. this. Like that yeah. will be normal range. And, uh, yeah, again, uh, depending on, on the overall market behavior and expectations, I think that's enough for, for the startup to, you know, uh, pass through one stage to another stage. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this time is needed for, you know, growing uh, right. uh, that much so that you are ready for the next round. Yeah. This is the thing. So, yeah. So let's now get to the Armenian ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Given these current trends, uh, yeah. what's in store for Armenia's startup mm -hmm. ecosystem? Yeah, for, for Armenia, uh, there are a couple of things to consider again. Uh, first, uh, we we have this uh, small market advantage, as we call it, we, uh, and all our startups from day one are working on on to create some products uh, on a global scale. This is a positive thing. Another thing is that most of the local investment vehicles uh, uh, ask for traction, meaning right. again that from day one startups know that they need to build some uh, business model that will be uh, easily you know, uh, uh, traction gaining. Uh, these are two components and add to that also uh, the uh, that our founders are hustlers. We call it them uh, like that and we invest in this type of, uh, to say, uh, founders who are hustlers. And uh, otherwise you cannot scale from Armenia to right. say. Right. And uh, considering these three factors and also combining with that, that we are in early stages of our ecosystem, as we said, and all the startups are more or less in seed, pre-seed stages, uh, not counting the uh, couple startups who are like post series B. Uh, uh, all, uh, we think the outlook for our startups is uh, more or less positive, not mm -hmm. so negative to say, because uh, considering all the above factor factors, uh, their models are so that they have uh, enough runways to, you know, uh, maintain their levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are advising them whatever you have, like uh, runway above, you know, uh, 15, 16 months yeah. invest in growth because your peers, your competitors are now, you know, tightening belts. Right. And there is uh, a lot of space being, you know, uh, uh, freed up in the market because, you know, uh, big players are not hiring, uh, firing, etc., etc. But the small players uh, can, you know, invest in growth and some get some proportion of the market. This is what we advise. And if we look at our portfolio again, all of them are, are really hustlers and we love them for that. Yeah, and uh, we think that even if you know some of them uh, in in some mid term, mid to short term, will not be able to maintain their business model th th that they were wishing to with yeah. their current vision, uh, they will have enough uh, time and resources to pivot to something new or something else to say. Right. Uh, because because they are hustlers. Right. Because uh, they have the runway and they have uh, really good teams. These, yeah. are, these are the like key components. So that's why I think, I think for our ecosystem, more or less the uh, outlook is not so negative. We'll weather the storm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, again, there are definitely challenges with uh, again fundraising, yeah. uh, with all all the challenges that the world is facing. We are facing as well, uh, more or less in in some proportions. But, yeah, you know, a uh, uh, startup uh, game is a long-term game right. and venture investing is a long-term uh, game. So at uh, any stage, uh, you know, you could hit this, uh, this crisis. So it's good that we are hitting it in early stages. Mm -hmm. Better than hitting it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, imagine if you would be hitting it pre-IPO. 
Right. It, it would be, you know, another big catastrophe worth billions, not, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands, <laughs> right? That right. you can, you know, yes. uh, uh, lose, you know, get sad. Yes. But, you know, after a week, you can <laughs> get, back, yeah. get back to work and create something yeah. new. So um, I feel like in terms of access to early stage capital, mm -hmm. Armenian startups will be more or less completely fine. Because, I mean, if you just take a look at your 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 guys' fund and let's say big story um i think you, you both more or less said that you'd be investing in around 25 startups each and let's say together you've probably invested in less than 20 there's capital enough for at least 25 yeah, yeah. startups let's say mm -hmm. um so then let's talk about cap startups that need to raise for a series a let's yeah. say first of all in terms of series a funding uh do mm -hmm. armenian startups look at the armenian venture capital market for that or is it mostly just outside mm -hmm. so uh how that strategy works we yeah. we uh usually co-invest with local peers as you said like with big story with uh, uh angel networks we yeah. usually uh, co-invest we, we you know with other vc smart gate granatus all the players uh, and in armenia you can get like you know uh, about a million million plus in in early stage funding if you are really you know good project then uh series a will come or you know will will be already uh popping up uh, uh near the you know uh, near future and uh for for uh, making that strategy easier usually we uh, are trying to involve also some uh, external funds like you know from the valley from yeah. uh, europe to to be in seed rounds seed round yeah to be in seed round because anyway you'll be co-investing uh, yeah. all together so let's uh, you know uh, that big fund come and lead it or you know and then maybe they'll follow up et the series a. Yeah, yeah they will either follow up or they will have all these you know connections to introduce you and also we ourselves are building our own network uh, of you know next stage VCs you know next stage investors Great state, so yeah. that yeah when we have uh, these you know good topics who are going to series A good startup then we are already recommending them yeah. so that they can pick it and you know uh, invest further so this is uh, how uh, usually VCs do like they they create their own ecosystems of you know uh, up to let's say series B and then you know okay after that uh, I don't know series A investors will yeah. pick it up go to BC etc but you need to have this this type of you know uh, surrounding vehicles that will uh, look at the project that you are investing in will pick them up at some point etc etc and uh, even if uh, there is no any you know uh, exact vehicle we as a vc uh, we are you know rolling our sleeves and and trying to help our portfolio as much as we can mm -hmm. like you know we are always on call they know that they you know ask any kind of questions and uh, present any kind of problems that they have yeah we'll be there to at least we'll try to help and starting from you know uh, cold outreach uh, to some vcs you know vcs are talking to vcs but vcs are not usually talking to startups right. this is some kind of uh, you know uh, uh, industry relationships that have been you know we have observed uh, but yeah i mean uh, starting from that ending with you know hiring issues uh, any kind of you know daily yeah. challenges yeah. Uh, uh, whatever it is or uh, strategy developments we are there to help and yeah. th that's the uh, smartness of the money that we are uh, you know investing right otherwise yeah. it's not uh, just that money yeah yeah why, why, why would a startup like take that money from us right and, you know they could take it from someone else right so then then we get to the companies the armenian startups that raised the series a last year let's say now there's at least a couple crisp super annotate um startups that are at that stage do you think their series b's will get delayed for uh, uh, more than 18 months um i think uh it depends on their internal strategies right. uh, uh so yeah i think uh, both both of them you mentioned and the others that we know uh, are uh, more of in a in a position that they can even wait to right. say to have more you know fundamental results to yeah. say for being you know uh, preparing for bigger rounds yeah uh but yeah i think i think they can they can sustain mm -hmm. got it okay in terms of access to those uh later stage rounds series a series b and stuff do you think we'll see vc firms in armenia that r specialize in growth stage rounds mm -hmm. like the series b's or do you think we're just way off from that still 
Um, uh, again, because right now we're, we're almost all of them are early stage. Yeah, places, yeah. all of them are now early stage. But the next level will be uh, like most of them will be again uh, early stage plus Series A. Right. So in our in our ecosystem, everything is growing naturally, and uh, uh, the same thing will happen to VCs. Yeah, VC started a bit later on. Like uh, we had only one VC for a very long time, Granatus. Then Smartgate started in uh, 2018, etc. So it's developing really slowly. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, it will evolve, and as the startups will grow and uh, pass through their you know uh, seed stages and go to Series A, definitely we'll have uh, our own Armenia vehicles. But and do the Series A's and B's. Yeah, yeah. And uh, f- we we also like plan uh, to have na- our like next fund uh, bigger and with both with uh, seed and Series A. And so yeah, th- this is the natural process of, of running a VC. I think yeah. uh, you start like with some topic uh, in Armenia. It's usually pre-seed seed. Then it evolves. Your portfolio evolves, and you like broaden your focus, and then right. then move to the next stage. And yeah, uh, I think uh, maybe even late next year we can hear some news about growth stage. Yeah, VC about firms. growth stage VC films. That's At exciting. We, we, yeah. we, we'll, we'll we'll try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get back to formula for for a mm-hmm. second. Uh, in terms of sourcing deals, where do you guys uh, where do you guys find startups most often? Mm-hmm. We are really active in the ecosystem. We uh, used to run uh, these incubation acceleration programs. Now we run uh, uh, an acceleration program with SAP, the German giant. So we usually sit in, you know, jury as a jury in right. any kind of competitions or boot camps or whatever it is. So uh, people know us, right. say. And uh, we know we know the people. We know we know uh, startups. And as soon as we see uh, some, you know, a light uh, in in the team, then we already start working with them. Yeah. Start working with them, and and you know, uh, hand to hand, uh, passing this journey uh, up until they will need the investments. And be that like very early stage uh, angel network will cover that. If it is a bit already like a uh, mature stage, then we will jump in. Or uh, this is one one channel to say. Mm-hmm. Another channel are referrals. Yeah. So when you invest in in startups, uh, usually uh, they have peers who are doing other startups who no one knows about them. You know, uh, in their uh, uh, small rooms or garages or whatever it is. So uh, they know that their peers have received some investment. They ask for you know feedback. Hopefully that feed, feedback yeah. is be, being you know good, and mm-hmm. then they are they are coming to us. So uh, uh, this is this is how we source the deals to say. And in Armenia, it is uh, more or less we are in a privileged position to say for for doing all this due diligence and knowing people because the ecosystem is small yeah. and everyone knows everyone and you cannot hide anything. Right. And if you even try, uh, you know, it will be really, really uh, unpleasant thing for you to do, <laughs> right. say. Yeah. Because, yeah, it will pop up really, really quick, yeah. quickly. And then, yeah. Uh, it will become an issue for you as as a businessman from Armenia. To Your say. reputation will yeah, be ruined. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I mean, uh, considering that it's early stage, uh, there are some characteristics that we value the most. Uh, because uh, again, in the long term, the business can change all the shape, and you know, models can change everything. But uh, the team and the drivers of the team, the founders, the executors, uh, will be there. Mm-hmm. So you need to, you know, uh, have all this trust and uh, yeah. relationship that is built needs to be really, really strong. Mm-hmm. And uh, our peers from Europe even say that you know, we see relationships last than uh, uh, last more than couple relationships. Yeah. So. You you know, uh, uh, it's really <laughs> uh, needs to be really on a strong, strong ground. Yeah. That's why uh, these type of things, like to say, these uh, essential skills or soft skills, yeah, how they call it, are, yeah, are, are are super important for us. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, earlier, you spoke a little bit about the SAP partnership. Yep. Is that with Formula VC or with Bana? Or? Actually, uh, officially it's with Bana. Yeah. So it's and as the name says, it's SAP Startup Factory by Bana. Uh, 
uh, but as it's uh, within our ecosystem, yeah. so we have access to all. Can you speak them. a little bit about what that program is? Because SAP is a huge player in the yep. global tech mm -hmm. sector, and it's exciting that they're in Armenia. Yeah, so uh, back in, uh, again, 2020, we had a guest from SAP. He was just uh, visiting Armenia with a personal visit. Uh, he told about his activities, what SAP is doing in innovation, etc., etc. So they had this uh, SAP IO program, which is the main uh, acceleration program for startups. And he was telling us that how uh, they opened it in Israel, etc. We listened, listened to his story and uh, told him like, uh, we, uh, why are we not opening one here? Yeah. He was like, why would we open it here? We thought, why not? <laughs> <And> <laughs> so he, he left, but, you know, the idea stayed. Yeah. And, and we, we nurtured it further. And, uh, you know, uh, after, again, all these uh, 2020 things uh, yeah. passed, uh, and also uh, add on that that SAP is a uh, you know giant and slow mechanism and organism. Right. Uh, we uh, in in June of 2021 we announced the first batch yeah. of this acceleration program. The idea is that SAP is looking for uh, ideas and startups who can uh, uh, complement their own products, mm -hmm. to say, and to enhance their own services that they mm -hmm. provide. So they are doing all these acceleration programs worldwide, uh, so that they can, you know, uh, yeah. get any any early access to to these projects, to these topics. Because if they develop it in house, it will take ages, and you know, in the end, they will not develop it. But they can, you know, easily work cooperate with startups in different ways. You know, starting with just partnership, ending with acquisitions. Why right. not? Uh, to to enhance their own services. Do they, they have do a space here? Yeah, thing. yeah, we have we have uh, a space uh, at Formula Hub. Mm. Uh, uh, we call the spa our spaces uh, the factory. So uh, we have the first factory in uh, a crossroad of uh, Physics Institute, Physica uh -huh. I as it is called, uh, in the park. It's really a cool and pleasant area. So yeah, you are welcome to uh, have a coffee sure. there. We Thank have you. a cool <laughs> coffee. So yeah, you are welcome. And and yeah, so uh, uh, SAP has this program in maybe uh, five, uh, six countries. Yeah, the big tech hubs and also in Armenia. It's interesting how important those personal visits from these big. Uh, giants are like mm. uh, if you l listen to the story of how a big story got started as well yeah. um, Chris Ben podcast mm -hmm. had a common investor that was in yeah. town and yeah. and uh, it, it ended mm -hmm. up you know leading to uh, an investment mm -hmm. uh, Guy let's get to our, our last question sure. um, uh, what do you hope to see for the Armenian investments both for Formula VC but also the, mm. the general startup investment scene in, uh, in Armenia over the next five to ten years um uh yeah so again before before jumping to that exact question i i'd like to explore a bit more on on uh, what our overall uh environment for investment vehicles look like sure. uh, so we we do all our uh, funds and fund building in armenia and all of them are like armenia registered why we do that because first we have really cool environment for that starting from administration ending with you know taxation and regulation so of course there is some regulation with central bank and everything yeah. but it's really light to say and it's not you know uh, making any obstacles to operate uh, that's why we open our funds here and we want this uh, exact narrative that an Armenian based fund funds you know uh, unicorn let's yeah. say or to become a unicorn startups uh, uh, to be there in in the media and in the world to yeah. say and uh, imagine like you know if you would uh, invest with an Armenian vehicle in I don't know Skype or in, in Microsoft let's say yeah. and then we become really giants and well, their early investors were from this country right okay let's look into that what what they have What's going so on there? yeah because as as we are building uh, a hub, so and we want it to become a global hub, innovation hub. You need to have like local players. If you are uh, building a hub, but you have you know you don't have any local uh, people who are there, then something is you know wrong. Right. Why, why would I come there if you, you yourself are not going there? Right. right? So uh, this is this is the main reason. And what what we want to see uh, for the for our uh, startup scene in in upcoming years. 
uh, again to become a, a, a big hub. Uh, for that, we need a lot of startups. For that, we need to again focus a lot in on on uh, education. So we want to see this uh, younger generation. I don't know which letter they are calling it now, Generation Alpha, or <laughs> maybe it will be already Generation uh, Beta or something. So we want to see them, uh, uh, you know, uh, to be in involved and engaged in this startup ecosystem more and more, even not directly being involved there, but whatever they do to nurture this innovation ecosystem, because we think that like uh, this technological uh, advancement and technological development uh, backed with scientific uh, uh, research and development. This is the way to you know, sustain our country and to take it to the next level considering all the obstacles that we have with uh, you know, being small, being you know, landlocked and everything. So, but with technology you can, you can uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, pass through all, all that uh, obstacles easily and, and grow and become one of the uh, key players in the world. And this is what we are, you know, moving Working towards. To, towards, yeah. Is Bana Armenia registered as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that um, becoming an investor through Bana has different criteria? So, for instance, in general, to to invest in the U.S., uh, which you, you have to become an accredited investor, which means you need two hundred fifty thousand dollars of income a year, yeah, yeah, and or a million dollars in net worth. Does that mean that you, mm -hmm. with you guys, some of that stuff is less strict or? Um, it's it's a bit different, not yeah. strict, but different. We always do this uh, angel due diligence as well, and we as a fund have some uh, requirements as well uh, to invest. But uh, as most of the startups are now registered in US, they uh, they have this you know non non US investor uh, to say uh, uh, legislation where uh, they have different requirements and we are you know uh, getting into that in terms of being difficult of of running a fund from armenia yes it is difficult because uh, first from uh, from the standpoint of gaining lps uh, yeah. people just don't know what's uh, you know uh, going here and you, you know if you uh, if you are in US, everyone knows US. It's understandable the legal jurisdiction and everything. And everything. Yeah. yeah, but if you talk about Armenia, uh, they are not, you know, uh, getting to the second sentence to hear <laughs> that, you know, even right. from Armenia, you can have a vehicle that is, uh, you know, as compliant with yeah. all the uh, uh, legislatory things and and uh, you know these uh, issues as uh, like Delaware funds or like uh, Luxembourg funds or any other, you know. Uh, Iman funds, let's say, where, where are they opening all the big funds? So yeah, uh, but uh, but yeah, this is this is a kind of a challenge for us. But uh, this is already our second fund. Yeah, and so yeah, hopefully uh, as the time passes and as we you know move, move into your yeah. third, fourth, and other funds, it will become easier and easier. I know I said that was the last question, but it's such an interesting topic <laughs> that I want to explore it a little sure. bit more. Um, in terms of impact, uh, just for Armenia specifically. Mm -hmm. Uh, like often there's a lot of conversation about, you know, like, yeah, these are Armenian companies, but they're all Delaware mm. C-Corps and yeah, yeah. in terms of taxation and stuff, mm. uh, Armenia misses out on a lot of that. Yeah. Does being an Armenia registered fund, yeah. is it in many ways more impactful for Armenia specifically? Um, uh, or is in, in that topic, I don't like this taxation point. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think, I myself, uh, as an economist, I don't think that uh, tax-driven uh, you know, growth model for economy is, is really sustainable. But that's another topic for yeah. another podcast, You'll I come guess. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in terms of impact, uh, if you uh, look around and look uh, how much impact this IT, actually tiny IT sector, is having, like there are officially uh, twenty something k people working in IT industry out of. Uh, our 3 million population. If you look at the impact, uh, even like starting from hospitality sector, yeah. ending with all the uh, other activities, the impact they are having, this is uh, this is what is being driven by by all this, you know, funding and startups and everything. And uh, in terms of uh, getting the funding from Armenia Registered Fund, uh, I, I cannot say it has, you know, really impact why would you take from Armenia Registered 
versus non-Armenian registered. It is mostly impactful for for the uh, ecosystem overall as a as a mature hub, so that you have local players. So that when you are looking at uh, you know Armenian startup map, you see that there are uh, both international funds, international funds uh, uh, managed and driven by uh, Armenian right. founders, and also Armenian funds who are again uh, have been born in Armenia. So uh, this is more of a, that kind of impact. But in terms of just uh, investment impact, again, it's uh, being invested in these uh, international companies. So uh, this uh, debate about being a Delaware C Corp, I don't know, Singapore, uh, I don't know what corporation, or maybe in Europe, in the end, uh, you are building a global company. If you are not being building a global company, right. then uh, we need matter. to revisit whether you are a startup or not. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> it takes us back to the beginning of the yeah. podcast. And yeah. and if if you look at like you know I don't know global giants I don't know Facebook, Amazon, whatever it is, uh, I don't know Facebook is registered in Ireland for tax purposes. Right. Yeah. Amazon hasn't paid taxes I don't know for ages. Uh, and they everything. recently started that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, uh, but the impact that they are having, both positive and negative, yeah, uh, for them we, yeah. we can uh, surely say but it's it's like there you can't deny it and b- th- that's why i think uh, we need to look at it uh, more you know uh, from from yeah from uh, from above view and uh, if you want to have like uh, local registered startups to get funding from you know sequoia anderson and all these big guys then we need to build a strong ecosystem. Right. Imagine, imagine we can build uh, uh, startups with our local resources up to I don't know Series B, and then you know there are superstars rocking yeah. around the world, and they uh, are opening the fundraising ground. Uh, of course, these big guys are going to invest in there, no matter what. They will. They have all the legal teams to structure the deal so that it is safe for them in terms of jurisdiction and it's yeah. doable. Uh, but definitely, they are g- not going to miss that opportunity to yeah. say. Um, think? I think this this topic is is and it's a little bit of a touchy subject, but I think it's interesting to a lot of people. Um, of course, Armenian startups pay taxes in Armenia, especially sure. in salary tax, sure. uh, and a lot of them are in the yeah, yeah. largest taxpayers yep. list. But um, and of course, maybe tax tax based economic growth is not mm-hmm. good for many reasons. But um, in terms of when talking about things like ed- investment in education or investment in security and in- infrastructure for the yep. country and stuff. All that comes from tax revenue at the end mm. of the day. Um, so, as you see this growth, are you are you anticipating that um, that problem will sort of just fix mm. itself through other mechanisms, or uh, no, how do you how do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, here here we need to uh, a bit explore this topic. Where, sure. where, when uh, people are talking that startups are not paying taxes here, yeah, they usually mean the profit taxes, right? The corporate tax. Yeah, yeah. the corporate taxes, yeah. which are like more or less direct taxes. So right. when I'm saying like this uh, tax driven economy is not really uh, what I really love, I, I mean this direct uh, taxation. Right. But uh, of course, uh, the model of the uh, country and the economy is so that it needs to be funded by the society somehow, yeah. and it need to be needs to be reinvested into infrastructure. Right. Uh, but uh, here is the debate starting about direct versus non-direct thing, and I am more of a non-direct, uh, uh, yeah. you know, non-director to say <laughs> <laughs> versus versus this uh, yeah. uh, direct squad. Uh, this this is the thing, but of course, I mean, uh, country needs to Has have the resources to to yeah. invest it into uh, infrastructure. There is another debate that uh, why would country need that? Let's uh, all the private sector do it, but I don't believe it is not realistic. Yeah, I think, and, yeah. Uh, nowadays, yeah, maybe you know, in in fifty, sixty, or hundred years it could be, <laughs> yeah. but not now. Yeah, not with the current model of yeah. countries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll explore this topic further in a future podcast, I hope. Cool. Guy and John, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having yeah. me. Thank you.